Robert Paul Smith has been a writer for 22 years. He's written fact and fiction for magazines, newspapers, advertising agencies, and he's produced soap operas and written ad libs for radio and television. He's also had eight books published and one play produced. But his big success started about a year ago with two of the longest titles in the book business. Where did you go out? What did you do? Nothing. And also, how to do nothing with nobody all alone by yourself. They are both currently bestsellers. Robert Paul Smith was born 43 years ago in Brooklyn. Spent his first dozen years in Mount Vernon, New York, and grew up here in Manhattan, where he met and married a painter by the name of Eleanor Goulding. She has since become a writer of books and articles. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Paul Smith and their two sons live in this white frame house in the New York suburb of Scarsdale. Evening, Bob. Hello, Ed. How are you? All right. How are you, Dan? You have a busy day? Uh, Bob, uh, I have a vague recollection of your talents when you worked at CBS so about 20 years ago. Yeah. Now I imagine since Where Did You Go, you've been credited in some circles as an expert on the care, feeding, and raising of children, especially boys. Yeah, I'm afraid I have, and this is not my idea. This is something that was thrust upon me. Uh, I am no expert. I have no advice to give about raising kids. Uh, I don't wish to be an expert about it. I think you love them and you do it by ear. That's about it. Uh, this is the place, Ed. Uh, I suppose the most significant thing in the room is the desk. Uh, this is an old table time. My brother-in-law makes furniture. That uh -huh. is, he represents a manufacturer furniture. This is a defective table top, so I got it for free. Yeah. That's an old sawhorse down there, which I talked him out of. <laughs> and this is an unpainted bookcase, which I talked the lumberyard out of for about, uh, well, I don't know, two dollars and sixty-five cents. The point of this is, I look at it, and I say, you've been broke before, and you can do it again, kid. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how many, uh, shall we say, self-disciplined hours a day do you sweat it out here, Bob? Well, this is a subject on which I believe it to be universal that writers lie. Uh, what's on the desk is very important, because an awful lot you have to do before you start to work. Yeah. Now, you see, you've got to check all these pen knives to see if they're really sharp enough to sharpen all those pencils in case that pencil sharpener doesn't work. You never use the pencils, but this uses up about an hour of time. And when you're through with that, you'll make paper clips into chains or out of chains, depending upon uh, what you did the day before. <laughs> so that accounts for a good deal of working time. Well, but somehow you managed to get quite a bit of writing done. Uh, yes, sir. I'm, I imagine you must have received some pretty interesting mail on where did you go out, what did you do, nothing. I received an awful lot, and I was delighted with it, and I answered every one. And some of it was pretty upsetting. Uh, this is, uh, from the evidence of this book, a very lonely country. Uh, lots of people who apparently, husbands who can't talk to their wives, and wives who can't talk to their husbands, and sons who can't talk to their fathers, and vice versa. Since I'm anonymous, write to me as if I knew the answers, which I don't. Uh, that was the sad mail and very touching. There was a lot of awful nice mail, too. People sent me things, and I like to get things. Uh, down here, I wrote in the book that I had never had any, I've never been able to find an arrowhead. Well, I remember that. And some lady wrote me and said, well, you poor kid, I found some arrowheads, and I'll send you some. And she did. That was one of the nice things. And right up here is another that absolutely delights me. This is a strip called Peanuts, which I expect you know about. Yes. And let me read the caption first, which is, I don't know if you can read the small type. The no, I can't. first one is, where did you go? Out. What did you do? I did a lot of things. <laughs> well, a lot of people sent it to me, and I wrote a letter to Mr. Schultz, who draws a strip, and said, since my son Joe thinks you're infinitely more talented than I am, and uh, I'm sus I suspect that too, would you send it to me? And I got a wonderful letter back from the uh, syndicate saying that it had already gone out, but by chance the person that had been sent to was a Smith fan, and he would give it up to me. And I got it, and I'm uh, terribly pleased with it. You have very thoughtful readers. Yeah, they're wonderful. Bob, uh, where does your wife do her writing? Uh, she is three floors straight down, Ed, and uh, I think maybe she's waiting to say hello to you. Eleanor? Evening, Eleanor. Good evening, Ed. Bob seems to lean toward rather long titles for his books. Uh, what are your titles like? 
Well, my first one was the complete book of absolutely perfect housekeeping. Uh -huh. Followed by, naturally, the complete book of absolutely perfect baby and child care. Yes. What's your latest? Well, I have one <clears throat> which will be out in September called Confessions of Mrs. Smith. And I just got the dust jacket the other day. Isn't that a rather short title for a Smith? Well, I guess it is, but it has a nice long subtitle, Reckless Recollections, True and Otherwise. <laughs> Long and candid, huh? Yes. A very well-titled family. Why is it that Bob works on the third floor and you work down on the first floor? Well, that way I get to answer the door and the telephone and watch the children and take the dog out. Are you suggesting that Bob isn't very helpful around the house? Oh, he's very helpful around the house, but he's even more helpful around the garage. Around the garage? Oh, yeah. Hi. Darling girl, hello. <laughs> Robert, what about this garage? Uh, well, I have... An automobile that I love dearly. It's an MGTD 52. And the milkman and I have an appointment tomorrow morning to take the head off and put new piston rings on it. The milkman? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's an excellent milkman and delivers the milk superbly. But I think it's really a hobby with him. I think his true interest is uh, fixing cars and international finance and perhaps a touch of brain surgery. I don't know. What? <laughs> what, what's his name? Oh, I'm going to tell you, you find your own milkman. No, I, I think he's a mythical character, not, Bob. Not at all, quite true. <laughs> Bob, I imagine um, you have to keep up with a lot of things. Uh, you do a lot of reading? Sir? Do you do a lot of reading? Yeah, I uh, do this constantly. I uh, read all the time. And as you can see, uh, I buy a lot of books. Uh, most of these were bought down on 4th Avenue, second-hand stores, and I just can't stay away from them. And I don't know how many books there are here, but I, my judgment would be that the, oh, 70% of them cost 25 cents or less. Anyway, it's not as bad as playing with horses. <laughs> better than playing with horses. Uh, Eleanor? Yes? Uh, did Bob inspire you to take up writing? Well, I don't know if you call it inspire, because I thought what he did was so much easier than what I did. Painting was hard, and I thought to just put a paper in a typewriter was wonderful. How'd you get started writing? Well, I put a paper in a typewriter. <laughs> she made a statement. I said, now she'll learn what it is to bleed and suffer and so on. And she put the paper in the typewriter, and she sold the very first piece she ever wrote. And I have never forgiven her. 20 uh, bucks, wasn't it? $20. I, $20. Yeah, and I thought it was the easiest $20 I ever made. After that, it got harder, huh? <laughs> well, little. Uh, Bob, uh, do you keep notebooks around to jot down ideas when they come to you? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, there are lots of different ways of writing, and uh, I don't do it that way. I keep it in my head for a while until it's uh, ready to go. And then I go up and just hit the typewriter until it smokes. Uh, I do a first draft, and by and large, that's it. Win, lose, or draw. There's no, uh, it's, it's either there or it isn't uh -huh. for me. And that's one of the things I hate him for, <laughs> because I have to rewrite at least three times. Uh -huh. but that's because you know how to type, which is the real difference. Uh, Bob, uh, you ever got discouraged with this difficult job of writing? You ever think of quitting? Oh, yeah, many times. And one time in particular, I wrote a novel called The Time and the Place some years ago, and I thought that was about as good a book as I could write. And unfortunately, very few people agreed with me. And I went to see my agent, Monica McCall. And I said, Monica, look, I've been doing this for a long time, and it makes no sense, and this is just a bad habit I've gotten into being a writer. And I'm going to cure it. I'm going to quit. And Monica said, there, there. And I said this tedious thing to her for about two and a half hours. And then Monica looked at me and said, why, Bob, you don't have the character to stop. <laughs> and she was right. That Bob, was let's right. go back to the old days. What's your fondest memory of your script writing days here at CBS? Or do you have any? Oh, I have a lot of them. I loved radio. It was wonderful. I suppose I shouldn't say this on television. Nobody seemed to take it so seriously. I think we had an awful lot more fun. It was sort of... Uh, a day's work for a day's pay, and where do you wash up and get paid and go home? And uh, I, I loved it. So did I. Yeah. Good night, Eleanor. Good night, Ed. Good night, Bob. Good night, Ed. Nice I to see you. Good night, Dan. Joe. <laughs>